well, good afternoon, West Ham fans. Now, usually we put a Hammers headline slot now, but I thought, you know what, well, let's mix it up a little bit. It's international break as well. So I thought, rather, we'll move the Academy show to now. So this is the Academy show. Let's talk about everything to do with the Academy, shall we? <laughs> So a very good afternoon to you all. So anyone new to this, what we do, anyone we've had since, you know, the end of last season. So every Monday we do a, a show dedicated just to the academy, just the under-18s and the under-21s, and the, obviously any, any other news that's uh, around about the academy. The reason being is obviously the academy is such an important part of being a West Ham fan, really. And obviously, you know, we, I'm in a very privileged position that I get to watch a lot of the academy football as well. So, you know, you might not get a chance to watch it all. So the idea is... We do it, and we obviously we've got a lot of players out on loan as well, uh, a lot of academy players out on loan. So we give you a little update of how they're doing and a little match reports of any games that the 18s and 21s have been playing. And also any other like news. There's been a lot of news, any stuff that's happening, um, any contract news or anything like that we bring to you as well. Um and, and yeah, you know, obviously coming into international break as well, there's going to be a number of players who go out who are our uh, our academy boys out with uh, their various um, nations as well. So, yeah, just to let you know what's what's going on in with all of them. So what we tend to do is we tend to do the loan stuff first. I thought we were doing the news. Then we do loan stuff. And then we talk about um, the actual um, the games that have taken place, that have taken play, taken part. You know what I mean? But we're going to mix it up. We're going to talk about the loans first. We're going to st- start talking about some of the players who've been um, who are out on loan for West Ham and their counterparts. George Earthy being the first one. Now, George was an unused substitute, didn't feature. Uh, sorry, he wasn't didn't feature in the match. They scored at all actually uh, for Bristol City as they lost three 0 away to Derby on Saturday. Obviously, they'll be going into the international break now. Um, wouldn't say he's had loads of loads of game time yet. It's, it's still early doors when it comes to George in terms of um, in terms of his um, progress into the Bristol City side. But I'm sure he'll get a lot more minutes. Obviously, he made that fantastic debut against Millwall, uh, where he was the assistant to the assist. That's like that the office, isn't it? Assistant to the assistant, but assist to the assist that got the got the winner against Millwall for Scott Twine. Um, let's talk about Callum Callum Marshall, who's, who's had a great start for his um, time at uh, Huddersfield. He was he started and played the first sixty seven minutes for Huddersfield Town in their two one defeat away to Rotherham United. Interesting enough, Tuesday they have. Um, uh, Huddersfield play Doncaster. Doncaster is Patrick Kelly's uh, side, although I doubt that either will feature potentially. Um, again, someone like Callum's been playing a lot. You know, he's, he seems to, this loan spell seems to be a lot better, although it's early doors, um, but we're getting there. Uh, in terms of Patrick Kelly, for example, um, he was a 78th minute substitute for Doncaster Rovers as they beat Port Vale 3 2 away from home in League Two action. As I mentioned, they'll be playing um, Huddersfield Town in the, um, in the EFL Trophy North round. I think that's what it's called. Elsewhere, who else we got out on loan? We've got Michael Forbes out on loan. Michael um, was uh, didn't feature in the matchday squad as Bristol Rovers um, lost. Uh, they won two 0 at home against Cambridge United. Again, you know, hasn't featured much at all in terms of Bristol Rovers. Um, Levi Lang, um, he's at Cheltenham Town. He was an unused substitute as Cheltenham lost two one away to Walsall in League Two. So not yeah, not, the boys aren't doing the, the, the teams aren't playing particularly well for them this year. It seems about Freddie Potts. Um, he's at Portsmouth, obviously in the Championship. He was an unused substitute as they lost three one at home to Sunderland in the Championship. Um, We'll see. I'm sure Freddie's going to get a lot more game time moving in to play more and more games as, a, as the season progresses. Heggie, he's on loan at Motherwell in the Scottish Premier Ship. He was an unused substitute in their away win against St Johnston, uh, 2-1 in the SPL. Um, 
I don't think Keggy's going to get a lot of game time, to be honest, unless the um, unless the Motherwell goalkeeper gets injured, in all honesty. Um, Mason Terry, he's out at uh, Hornchurch. Hornchurch FC in the National League South. They lost. He played the full 90 minutes as they lost 3-2 away to Western Supermare in the uh, National League South. Good to see Mason, obviously. I think they're playing at home on Tuesday, I want to say, um, in terms of uh, Hornchurch, their next game. Let's talk about the internationals. Obviously, we're going into the international break. A uh, number of the, the first team, obviously, out on international duty. And so are our academy stars, as eight hammers have been called up to England youth squads uh, across the... Um, across the breadth of the academy. Under-21 captain, West Ham under-21 captain, Caelan Casey. He'll be travelling with the elite squad, um, formerly known as the under-20s. Um, it's his second call-up to elite squad, having represented the Young Lions in June earlier this year. Um, George Earthy, will, who also featured, um, but will miss out due to an angle injury, which explains why he wasn't in the squad for Bristol City. Uh, Under-19s, Lewis Orford here. Josh Jarlow, we'll talk about in a minute. Finley Herrick, we'll talk about as well in a minute. They've all been chosen to represent the three lines. Both um, Lewis and Finn are, um, have had a history of representing England uh, across various youth levels, um, starting from debuts at the under-16s. So um, Lewis was the captain, actually, for the under-18s when they beat Morocco 2-1 at St George's Park back in May. Um, who else have we got? Um, further down the card, Edris Gollumbeckis, my boy. He's had a great start to mess with the under-18s. He scored two goals in his last two appearances. They didn't play at the weekend, the under-18s. But he's been called up to the under-18 squad. And what's exciting about this is he um, is 16, but he's represented Lithuania at under-16 level. So he'll have the potential to link up with the under-18s, which is fantastic. Elsewhere, we've got uh, Andre Dyke, Gijana Nuoso, and Lani Owesi. They will be heading to Germany for the under-18s, England under-18s international camp, but they go up against Mexico. Uh, Israel and Germany. So there's a lot of uh, England call-ups there, which is fantastic news for the boys. So looking forward to seeing the old uh, three lines for the old West Ham. That sounds all good to me. Um, in terms of games that have been played, we only played one, which was on Friday, where the under-21s beat Norwich City, uh, under-21s of the PL2, 1-0. It's uh, their third um, game in the PL2. Three victories, 100% top of the league. And um, it it wasn't a classic game. It wasn't a classic game. Lovely. It was a beautiful day. Beautiful. We had the, had the, had the golden hour, a bit of sun. As soon as the sun dipped at Rush Green, it got a bit, got a bit chilly. Um, but they maintain their strong starts to, to the PL2. Josh Ajala, who featured, scored the... Uh, Scored the only goal in the second half, and uh, it's a perfect start going into the international break. Um, I think Norwich, had, you know, from my perspective, Norwich seemed more up for it. We were a bit lackluster, I'll be honest. It's, we just didn't seem going for the motions a little bit. It seemed uh, Finn Herrick, who obviously got called up to England on the seven, under 18s, um, this for the international break. He played really well. Um, did a couple of good saves. Norwich press, but we seem to be quite in control. Um, Lewis. Didn't have his greatest game, but it was still a really good game. Um, and and an average game for Lewis is still a very good game for everyone else. He was fantastic. Um, I thought Sean Moore played well. Junior Robinson, again, constant threat down the right-hand side. He's really got a good future. I, I really rate Junior Robinson, and I really think he's got it. And I'd really like to see him, you know, some involvement. You know, maybe your th the third choice right back. At, uh, within the first team after Wamba and Sufa, I'd say he's third choice. Um, interesting player to note was playing for West Ham was Louis Zhao, a man who we thought was out of West Ham. Um, we thought he would be going back to either Brazil or Portugal. A number of sides were interested in him. Um, West Ham were looking for a few million quid to sort of make a make some profit on the the, the purchase of Louis Zhao. Obviously, he was one of Rob Newman's first forays into the Brazilian market. He played really well, I thought, um, and nearly scored um, with an opening effort, just narrow, narrowly missing the post in the first half. Um, but, yeah, it was a, a strange side as well. Obviously, uh, Kalen didn't play. He was obviously called up into the first team um, as sort of the, the fourth choice centre-half, basically. Um, obviously, with players out on loan. Um, 
you know, Ryan Bates had, had a good game. Um, Ezra Mayers had a good game as well. Tyrant Patter in the middle was tireless. Um, really sort of didn't give anyone any sort of anything, really. What's well, quite interesting, Mason Terry was on the bench. Um, as we know, he's on loan at the same time. Um, so he's, I suppose, Hornchurch is just down the road, really. And that's, um, they're not professional. So he's obviously training with the, with the academy, but obviously playing uh, in the North uh, National League South with Hornchurch. Um, but yeah, three wins out of three. Um, as I said, they, they've played a lot better. Obviously, they, they, they demolished Southampton the week before. Um, and Norwich, Norwich had a lot of energy. You know, they, they came for the game. And um, I just didn't think we we went through the motions a little bit. But show resilience and got the win. And, uh, you know, that's that's kind of what matters when it comes to the PL2. You know, yes, it's about getting minutes. But also it's about you know, winning the game. And, you know, obviously we had a good outing last year in the PL2. And uh, we've, we've maintained it. So, yeah, all looking good in the hood uh, for the academy at the moment. Obviously, international break will... Uh, a number of the, the lower league sides will be playing, obviously, domestically as well. So we'll keep an eye on that. And obviously we'll report back any um, any academy, you know, minutes that these guys have had. Um, but obviously the guys like George, obviously, he's got an ankle injury. But, um, you know, Bristol Rose will be playing the international break and neither will Portsmouth with Freddie Potts and neither will Huddersfield with Callum Marshall. Although um, there'll be Northern Ireland internationals and stuff like that to, he'll be moving on to. So as Patrick Kelly and uh, the under-21s and Northern Ireland internationals and stuff. So loads of stuff going on, as always, with the academy. Um, and the way you keep on top of that is by subscribing to the West Ham Network. We'll have, um, over the international break, we hope we have a couple of nice interviews lined up um, with ex-Hammers, um and uh yeah we'll keep you busy we'll keep you busy until next time take care stay safe stay warm stay humble keep the faith and i'll see you guys on the flippity flop much love bye-bye kill your own